very much. Good morning to everybody. It's nice to be here again. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, I want to talk about flux compatibilization and type 2 b supergravity and uh, what the meaning the results what we got uh, represented the last part only. And uh, this work was uh, I've been doing together with Neon Swetich and Tank Raoul from the University of Pennsylvania. But in the main part of my talk, I want to present uh, two approaches to flux compatibility. One approach is uh, given by the relation to complexes in relation to the church work reduction and to gauge the modality. And the other approach is to uh, address the issue of uh, fluxes in terms of the form geometry and classification in terms of uh, G structure. But let me start with the introduction. For a major problem in string, any string compactification is the appearance of a continuous moduli space of uh, string wave graph. And uh, moduli appear in string wave in two guises. Uh, one are the closed string moduli and the other the open string moduli. By moduli are the constant parameters which are not fixed in the, in the model and they are related to a mass as scalar fields. For the closed string moduli uh, are related to deformation or can be understood as deformation possible deformation of the internal manifold or cycles of the internal manifold and open string moduli appear uh, into red braids on the of this manifold and this braid is not rigid if you can move this braid then we have some moduli related to this uh, moving of this deformation of the braids to get contact to the uh, standard model of uh, particle physics but also get contact to inflation and cosmology we have to fix all of these uh, moduli maybe a part of the uh, different field but all other uh, moduli have to be if on the other hand, supersymmetry is this probe only at a fairly low energy scale, then we are especially interested, or we need a, a mechanism which, uh, which fixes the moduli while still conserving some of the supersymmetries. And so far, only fluxes uh, seem to provide a mechanism where we can fix the moduli while still conserving some of the supersymmetry. Well, by fluxes, I have to say, I refer to uh, in a rather loosely sense that fluxes are some field strengths of a one or or an S form fields which are non zero in the, in the vacuum, where the field strengths are in the internal space to preserve this from the radiant kind of the uh, vacuum. Well, the uh, closed string uh, moduli, to understand the, the, the fixing of the closed string moduli by fluxes, one has to keep in mind that if you put a flux on a, on a, on a, on a cycle, then this flux uh, tends to, to to expand the uh, corresponding cycle. And on the other hand, the perpendicular cycle, uh, uh, the flux in the perpendicular cycle tries to change the, uh, the corresponding uh, cycle. So then we have a competing effect that you have a flux in a cycle and a flux perpendicular to the cycle, and there are two competing forces. And this is uh, something we can understand in supergravity how fluxes uh, will fix the uh, corresponding moduli. Can you tell me more about this? So if I put a uh a B field on a brain, what's the effect? I don't see the shape. Well, this is also a super gravity solution. It has actually brains, for example. That one has also that uh, one has, one has the fluxes is perpendicular, but the brain is charged on the fluxes, so the, the, the fluxes is perpendicular to the brain. So if one takes an intersection of the brain, that one has uh, fluxes which are parallel to one brain and perpendicular to the other brain. Then one sees that you can see that the corresponding uh, uh, internal circles are. Uh, 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 fixed by these, by these post flux are turned on. You turn only, only one flux, there was this runaway uh, behavior of the corresponding uh, uh, circle. So the mechanism is not, it's, it's not due to gravity, it's not that the gravitation. Well, then back actually due to gravity. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's back uh, yeah, yeah, sure, to gravity. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. But well, it's so gravity, I'm talking about so gravity. But here too, too, they are saying that the flux are quantized and therefore the, 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 the flux goes through a cycle and it's going to be continuously deformed. But it's so gravity, it's, it's not so important that the quantization condition. If one turns into super gravity, one can really look at this, uh, for example, the intersecting brain uh, uh, solution in super gravity, and one sees exactly that. If you stabilize into the surface, one needs two fluxes. One is parallel and one is perpendicular to this side. Because there are two competing forces, and then it's, uh, one sees that it's, not, uh, that it's lower bound than the internal surface. Is there a simple way to understand why one is, one is expanding parallel and perpendicular? But maybe I change equations. Maybe if you think about them, some, some, some fluxes, you have certain energy momentum, then you have some, some uh, energy source, you have some, some uh, pressure, uh, pressure matters. And you have constant current, you 
friend who, who uh, gives such a force to the science yeah. and it's part. Uh, the political is just opposite. That it's, uh, I don't know whether it's deep understanding. But still, this case, as I said before, it's such a good it's explicit to a very system which you might see that there's uh, some forces. These in the internal data internal. Yeah, yeah. Talking about internal, well, if it has a ten-dimensional solution, solution, then it's of course in its uh, infinity. But it's, uh, I would find always the flux to the internal, uh, 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 flux to the internal space. Gauge-Schwagabend, wir haben auch die Vorderheit schon auf 
class dimension, row dimension. It's unclear what the difference is to uh, the 10 dimension geometry. So therefore, in order to get the, the internal geometry, we have to solve the equation directly in uh, 10 dimension. And in doing this, we have also uncovered that we have a complete embedding of the fluxes in the internal space to which cycle we can put what, which fluxes with all frequency of symmetry. Well, generally, there are many solutions possible of the 10 dimension equation, but there's a classification of the solution in terms of uh, torsion classes. Because the fluxes can be understood as certain torsion uh, <coughs> uh, components for the, uh, for the spino, the spino equations. So this I come back to this in the, in the uh, third uh, part. Well, the advantage is also here that uh, if we know the, the embedding of the, of the brains, then we also have a, have a good uh, feeling how, how we can have to wrap brains on it. Because brains are charged under these fluxes. If you know how the fluxes have to, you have to sit in the internal space, then we know already also where we should uh, wrap brains on it without breaking super symmetry. So unfortunately, in this second approach, uh, there are not many explicit solutions available. So far, in most cases, it's only rewriting of the dimensional in the equation in terms of the dimensional equation for, for differential forms. And, uh, but there are some examples already known as, for example, the near decayer spaces for uh, like for ACO gravity. And in the last part, I will uh, want to present also a solution on the type to be uh, for gravity side. Well, of course, having these internal geometries as here, for example, these near decayer spaces, uh, we do not know yet whether they are all multilayer fixed. I mean, that is um, not even an issue to, to ask for uh, 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 having a complete space for us for the multilayer spaces of these uh, spaces. Still, one has to go to the mathematical literature to see whether they are, uh, whether these spaces, these concrete spaces, uh, still have moduli or not. So, what I mean, continuous <coughs> integration of the spaces, yeah. You said that it's deep solutions that are going to be only for massive terms, like great, but I thought the Giovanni, uh, Kachu, and collaborators based on the type deep. Uh, so there are examples of, and except for one paper which appeared a couple of days, but uh, they are all in the same Well, we have also found about type 2A, uh, that was the example, yeah. Also, Dimitros, uh, when you are also a little bit more extended. But then we like all the matrix, but most of the fluxes. But it's not the part of the actual space, it's not flat space. But this is on the type 2A, it was a 2A, yeah, it's known. But it's not a Calabiao compartification, as I said, you know, this is a near the chaos space, it's not a Calabiao space, not a compartification of the Calabiao space. But it's still a non-trivial issue, but you truly want to have what to preserve the Calabiao property. So it becomes really non-trivial to, to solve this equation explicitly. That's what they do, don't they? Yeah, they want to have Calabiao, yeah. So let me start with simulation of uh, fluxes to uh, Church Schwartz reductions and uh, H2 gravity. Well, general and very strong constraint of the 10 dimensional uh, vacuum is to assume that the 10 dimensional matrix is flat and all fields are, are trivial. This is typically way, 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 way too much, uh, typically is enough to have an illegal uh, constraint of the vacuum that our 4 dimensional vacuum is from uh, the layer. So that the internal matrix, but also the Ramon Ramon fields and the NS fields can still be non trivial uh, in the vacuum. Of course, the supercity will tell us that they are not independent, but there are some relations between them. So therefore, this means that the uh, internal matrix, but also the, the gauge potentials, uh, do not need to be uh, constant, so they can be kept on the internal commodity. But in order to make a colossal climate reduction, one still has to, to make sure that uh, the gauge invariant quantities of the Lagrange, or the equation of motion, that they are in band of the, uh, in the, band of the, of the uh, internal coordinate, so that we can integrate towards the internal space and make the colossal climate reduction. Well, these reductions, uh, where we assume certain dependence on the internal coordinate, they are known as the Church-Schwartz reduction or generalized Church-Schwartz reductions. And to make it a bit more explicit, I will look on uh, type 2b uh, supergravity. In type 2b supergravity, are these, are these not, they're, so they're not periodic around the cycle? Church-Schwartz reductions, I thought, were when. Yeah, yeah. So you are not single values, they go around the cycle. Yeah, there's some, some dependence, there's some, some, some twisting or some, uh, yeah, yeah. But then also with your short reduction with respect to, 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 to gauge speed, to gauge to form speed. I come to this, uh, the next one, there's one simple example with the accent dilemma that I'm type 2b. So we have a focus on uh, type 2b, uh, supergravity. In type 2b supergravity, we have the uh, field bind in the common sector, we have the field bind in NS uh, field, NS2 form B field, 
entweder zu Dilaton, in unserem Montaron-Sektor, wie heißt another scalar field in Axion, we have another two form and we have a four form uh, potential. Well, it mixes potential, so we, we combine these, we feel the, the axon and the gelaton goes together, the axon gelaton field, the complex axon gelaton field, how the supergravity field really defines this another field, but this is this relation. And also the Ramon Ramon two form and the NS uh, two form, they are combined into a uh, complex uh, two form, and this gives rise to this mm -hmm. complex uh, F3 to the three form, which says that this combination enters the supergravity Lagrangian, which is called. Uh, G3 and uh, well, the four form potential has a uh, four form potential has a field strength, high form field strengths, and the plus indicates that it has to be the gravity only the self dual part uh, will end up the, uh, the theory. Well, none of these, uh, or most of these uh, forms, they are not closed. Uh, so that D of G3 is, is, is this expression, and D of uh, F5 is given by this, uh, this, this, this <coughs> the one two form and uh, what is it mean? DB. Six form the uh, team fetch fetch D. Well, P and P and Q is basically the axon dilaton. Uh, P is this uh, DT and T was this relation. So now let's consider to make this uh, set this Church Schwartz reduction for the simplest possibility. Let's consider the uh, axon dilaton public uh, and type to be supergravity. And the axon dilaton public is given by this expression. Well, this expression has a global symmetry that we can shift the axon dilaton by any real constant value uh, c. And now, in this uh, closer in this short Schwartz reduction, we uh, well let's consider the simplest case. We have just a compact pair of one circle, and uh, so the short Schwartz reduction. We, well, the standard closer pair reduction, we would assume that this whole field doesn't depend on the internal coordinate. But in short Schwartz reduction, we assume that it can depend on the internal coordinate y. And uh, here, one has to assume that it depends only linearly on the internal coordinate y. With some mass parameter m. Now, with this uh, expression, we make standard closer Klein ansatz for the, for the matrix, so we reduce the one internal coordinate. The one is the internal coordinate, this is closer Klein gauge field, this will be the design <coughs> four dimensional uh, matrix. Then we have to take the inverse, we plug in the inverse, and then we calculate the, the kinetic term for the excellent dilaton coupling, and we derive this expression. And now, this expression, we have a cubic derivative acting on this. Uh, uh, background uh, uh, axion, axion field, tau of, of x, and the covariant derivative uh, enters the, the, uh, uh, the Klein gauge field, and uh, in addition we get the potential, potential which uh, depends on this sigma or the sigma of scalar. Now the interesting point is what one sees here is that this uh, resulting uh, Lagrangian has now a local symmetry. Before it was a, a global symmetry, tau goes to tau plus c, now, in this reduction, we, we get a local symmetry with respect to this uh, tau of x. So we can shift tau of x by any uh, function uh, c of x uh, if we are at the same time making gauge transformation for the, uh, for the gauge field. Well, this is just a, in this higher dimensional zero, it's just a coordinate uh, transformation. You can understand it. So, therefore, uh, this, this reduction, this short Schwartz reduction, corresponds to a gauging of this global, you can understand it as a gauging of this global symmetry. So, if I look, they make the standard for the Klein reduction, and when it has to make a gauge, then this gauge would correspond to this uh, Schwartz reduction. But is this Schwartz reduction, is a similar method to what Macron did, uh, or uh, this concept space dimension reduction? Who? Macron, uh, uh, is. It's, uh, it, it was uh, one, one or two months earlier discovered the Fordex mantle. And uh, in Fordex mantle, they use the gates in the piece, while Serge Schwartz uses the global symmetry. This is the difference. Uh -huh. Well, I also have to say that originally Scherch and Schwartz, they were really using some, some global symmetry of, of the fermion, in some, some cases of, of the fermion. Body. This will create also super symmetry. But it's more, I always think that this generalized Schwartz reduction, so it really, uh, this global symmetry is uh, related to the uh, scalar fields. Uh, but this can be also the same thing. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 You can undo this by the term coordinate transformation this higher scale, so we have something. Uh... So, what this one does is simple as the example that we have to use is actually shift symmetry for this uh, Schwartz reduction, but one can in fact use any uh, global symmetry for this uh, Schwartz reduction. 
Of course, if this is well, normal, it's the answer that's commute with supersymmetry or not, and it breaks supersymmetry or not, but supersymmetry or breaks part of the supersymmetry. So the much general procedure is that one has to perform a, a, a non-constant uh, symmetry transformation in a way that gauge invariant quantities remain still independent of the internal coordinate, so that we can make a kind of reduction. Here it was a gauge invariant quantity, therefore we have to assume it's a linear dependent on the internal coordinate, so that the Lagrangian is still independent on the internal coordinate or integrate over it. So the design is always that one gets uh, charged uh, scalar fields, and here also see the axial covariant over the axial axial field. Thus, one gets a potential. And then the hope is that, uh, well, this, this potential may fix, or one wants to have that it may fix uh, uh, all of these scalar fields so that we can lift the modulus modulus with it, modulus basis with it. As I said, uh, with this, in the example before, in the axonic case, it was, uh, it was the relation, we get the relation with the fluxes. In the axonic case, it was just this uh, one form which we turned on in the, in the internal space. And the one form was just this d of tau, it was linear to n dy, it was exactly one m times d dy. But the same mechanism uh, can also be applied by some uh, general forms. Uh, well, in Kalabiyao orientation, we know that there, there are no one forms. So then we are interested well, to generalize this procedure also to, to higher forms. And to see this, one can look, for example, for this uh, B field, which is, it comes to the Yau computation, which comes together with this uh, Kela class J with a complex uh, two form. Now, again, we assume that we have, well, but has expanded, because the Kela have expanded with a whole complete set of, 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 of harmonic two forms. And uh, the coefficient for it are the scalar fields. And now, in Schwarz production, we assume again that there's a, there's a part which depends on the internal coordinate. But this dependence on the internal coordinates, again, in a way that it's uh, that the field strengths. Uh, well, it has the standard uh, scalar part, but the field strength is now independent of the uh, internal coordinate. So it's just a three form, uh, so this, this flux term, this H flux, which is now can be expanded in a complete set of uh, three forms, chi. Well, having these, uh, 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 this, this flux term turned turn on, then we have to also take into account these, these flux terms in the, in the other fields. Then we have this phi form where also the H field enters. And uh, now we have to take care of this, of this flux part here. Then we see that in the closer time reduction, we get an additional contribution related to the mass parameter here. And uh, so therefore, the reduction is reduced over, over the internal space. We are getting great over these uh, three forms. Then we find a four dimension that gets massive uh, two form coupling in, in four dimension. So this massive two form can dualize to a massive vector. And this massive vector was something like this charged scalar coupling, what, what, I, what we saw before. So then we get again charged uh, uh, matter by this reduction, and on top of it we get also potential. And for this simple case, the potential is uh, simply that we have the naked part of this uh, three form, and uh, well, and on calculate this one gets a uh, mass parameter times the internal uh, metric uh, GAD. So in order to get the relation to gauge to gravity, we have to find the uh, corresponding killing vector. What is the global symmetry that we have gauged? Uh, and to identify the Killing vector, as I said before, we have to dualize the massive tender to a massive vector field. This massive vector field there is covered through to a charge uh, scalar field. And then this corresponding uh, coupling with C can identify the, the, the Killing vector field. So the case before, uh, the, the, the Killing vector, the, the direction of the scalar field from exactly the scalar, which is dual with this massive tender field. This dual scalar is exactly the, defines the, uh, the axonic uh, direction that we have in this. Uh, if it has to be this, this, uh, uh, this model. Well, and then having identified the killing vector, then one can use the whole machine of gauge to gravity, one can calculate the potential, one can calculate the whole uh, the square gravity, Lagrangian, and, and, and so on. So that does not need to be, to be but does not need to be the, the concrete or the kind of action. You know already right, that uh, if you have identified the killing vector, then you know that gauge to gravity will take care of uh, all complex that they are consistent with, with, with supersymmetry. So in fact, one, one finds that, uh, well, generalizing this procedure, one finds that that each flux form configuration corresponds to a certain gauge, gauge to gravity. But the opposite is, of course, far from, far from clear. The gauge to gravity is not clear that it corresponds to a certain flux form configuration. And, uh, well, the relation to gauge to gravity arises, of course, the question can be understood the uh, stabilization already in gauge to gravity. What do we have to gauge to fix all of the moduli? Well, this, this can be done, uh, and it's, uh, well, it's rather technical, and I didn't want to present the technical details. But I just want to present the, the results that in 
geht es über Gravity, weil as I said before, we have, we have the Yauch modification that we end up with n equal to zero gravity in, in, in four dimension. In n equal to zero gravity, we have two uh, scale distance and two multiplets. These are vector multiplets and these are hyper multiplets. And then we get two conditions uh, in, in, the, in the vacuum. This was condition one and the condition two. Well, this condition can be also understood that the extremize the corresponding superpotential with respect to the scalars of the vector multiplets and with respect to the scalars of the uh, hyper multiplets. Anyway, what one finds is that the supersymmetric vacuum is given by the fixed point sets of the uh, corresponding killing vector of the, the, the killing direction that one has to keep engaged. So now, if you want to have an, an, uh, that all moduli are fixed, we have to make sure that this fixed point set is really a point on the, on, the, on the scalar manifold. If it would be some extended object, then we sort of would have certain flat directions. And this is the case that's really a point on the manifold if the uh, two form D of K to the, uh, on the, on the scalar manifold uh, calculated, that, the, that this has a maximal rank. So that's really a rotational group. That has no translational uh, degrees. Uh. So if this is the case, then the fixed concept is really important to the manifold that we have fixed all the moduli. Well, this came from one condition, and the other condition one finds that this is immediately, uh, as long as the, the metric of the moduli space is, is smooth, then one finds that any fixed concept is really isolated. There are no flat direction in the uh, vector modified, moduli space. So, well, so one can find a gauge of gravity explicit condition that one fixes it, uh, uh, when one fixes all moduli. We can also ask what we have to do to get uh, flat space uh, vacua. And to get flat space vacua, again, one can uh, translate it, but the super potential has to be zero in the vacuum. One can translate it into a condition on the, on the killing vector. And uh, this rotation group has to be a subgroup of this uh, SP2N, which is the holonomy of this uh, moduli space. So the advantage of this uh, <coughs> approach is via to understand flux communication as Schwarz reduction and to, to, to translate it to gauge gravity was that one can explicitly obtain the, the uh, one can use the machinery of gauge gravity and one can explicitly obtain the, the potential and one can then having the potential one can also address the issue of, of non symmetric vacuum and stability and so on. So this is a nice thing of, of this gauge gravity approach. Of course the disadvantage of this approach is that we never know exactly the two-dimensional <coughs> origin of this solution. We don't know what is the internal geometry. Uh, whether there are supersymmetric cycles, how we can wrap brains on it, and, and, and so on. And to address these issues, uh, there's the second approach to, to flux compatibility, where one solves directly uh, the killing speed operations in the n dimension. Well, here I was giving this, uh, well, the supersymmetry tells us that the variation of the gravitino and the variation of the gelatino has to be zero to preserve some supersymmetry. And here I was giving this uh, variation for the time to be supergravity. And any solutions of this. Uh, equations or solutions are this, this killing spin of epsilon uh, will correspond to a certain unbroken uh, supersymmetry. Well, F and F is all the five form here, G was this, this three form, and all indices are summed with the uh, gamma matrices. So these equations are quite uh, complicated uh, in general, but uh, we are interested in a, in a specific vacuum that our four dimensional vacuum is concave uh, band. So, so therefore, we assume that uh, the 10-dimensional width is up to a dwarf vector is really direct product of the internal space and the external space. For the external space to be compound grain band, there are two possibilities, either it's an sitter, which is consistent with supersymmetry, or it's a Minkowski vacuum. So as for the, well, the fluxes are all living in the, in the internal space to preserve this uh, compound uh, symmetry. The pipe form is then given by this uh, quantity Z. Well, as for the matrix, also uh, for the spin we have now to, uh, to decompose the spin into internal and external part. The external spin I call theta, the internal spin of eta. In the simplest case, we have just one internal spin of eta. And consistent with this uh, one internal spin of eta is that we can define uh, SU3 structure, so we can define it. Uh, this singlet is SU3. Having only one spin we can be uh, SU3 singlet spin and we can define this in two form, it is reflected two form J, and we can define that in holomorphic three form. But holomorphic is respect to this uh, synthetic uh, two form. Of course, as long as this spinor is not uh, covalently constant, also these, uh, these forms are not closed. And, uh, the non-closure of these forms are related to torsion classes, and they will tell us what is the geometry of the internal space. If they are closed, then we have Karabiao. If J is closed, then, then we have Pila. But there are many, many more possibilities. Uh, yeah. Other possibilities? Three the gamma is three Yeah, this gamma is three and the three gamma is an absolute choice. Epsilon. 
Gamma M, Gamma N, Gamma P, and then anti-symmetrizing N and P, which are anti-symmetrizing version. The same is true here. This was also the product of two gamma which is anti-symmetrizing. But here's just a complicated one. Here's the totally anti-symmetrizing. It's bigger in five dimensions. It's not bigger in five dimensions. Well, this is in ten dimensions. This is not a three-dimensional gravity in ten dimensions. And this is a, uh, well, I'm interested in from 10 dimensions to, to 4 dimensional wave well, This is a 6 dimensional internal space. 6, six, six dimensional internal and this is 4 dimensional external. And LMP is uh, the internal, yeah. Well, so we are interested in practical means, so we are gravity, and uh, when one has to solve these things, we are creation and uh, they. Uh, Separated into two, uh, two parts. One is the, well, one is gives constraints on the fluxes, and the other part gives the differential equation of the uh, resulting spin of the internal space. But these constraints on the fluxes are related to the dilatino variation and to the external part of the gravitino variation, and the internal part of the gravitino variation, so this m bar to 1 to 6 for the six dimensional internal space. This gives the differential equation of the internal spin of, and this differential equation will tell us what is the geometry of the internal space. So it's completely constant and it's an. Uh, Calabiao, uh, but it's not correct because there are some non trivial torsion parts and uh, this will get the geometry. Well, the literature so far um, mostly uh, discussed about two types of vacuum, this is so called eight type of vacuum. In this case, the 10 dimensional spinner is a uh, Majorana spinner, Majorana white spinner, type to be. And uh, well, this mainly related to this, if I solve the equation for this spinner, I just want to find that all among Ramon fields. Uh, uh, are trivial, and only the NS uh, forms are non trivial, and this is related to the common sector of, of string theory. And the other type of, of vacuum is when the, uh, when the, the 10 dimensional spin is a direct product of, of, of this uh, 4 dimensional spin and the 6 dimensional spin And for this spin on that one finds especially that the, the internal space is always in Kähler space, and if the external field it happens to be constant, then it's also in Calabio. You know, the Calabio property of the internal space. Therefore, this spinner uh, has attracted a lot of attention in the literature. But in general, of course, one has to, uh, one has to solve the equation for this uh, spinner ansatz, and uh, as a result, what, what one finds is uh, that uh, the cosmology, the four dimensional cosmology constant, has always to be zero. So, therefore, for this spinner ansatz, where we have only one internal spinner, the external space is always uh, Minkowski. Or the other way around, if you want to have an anti center four dimensional spin, what we have to do, we have to make the spinner ansatz. Uh, where we have not only one internal spinner, but we have to allow for more spinners. This is related to the SU2 structures. And moreover, one finds that the internal space is always in complex manifold, in the three complex coordinates. Then the result is that the uh, three form uh, uh, can be written in this way. It has a so called primitive part, and the primitive part has to satisfy these, these equations. And the other part is proportional to this uh, symplectic form J. And uh, well, this, uh, this is three form is given by this pi, and uh, recalling that the pi was given was related to the external dilaton, and here we introduced the phase the theta, and also this uh, three form was related to this uh, was the two form and the ns two form, and now this uh, tau, uh, the external dilaton tau, and the phase theta, and uh, the z uh, uh, function which is termed the phi form, they are given by this. Uh, uh, of find after lengthy calculation that they are given by these expressions that they are given by its, uh, one uh, holomorphic function f holomorphic in the three internal coordinates because the internal space has to be complex uh, uh, space so we can introduce complex coordinate and this is a holomorphic function in the three complex uh, coordinates and moreover we have on the uh, right hand side we have this uh, phase alpha this phase alpha was related to the spinor ansatz because the two factors of the spinors uh, they appear in this uh, Function alpha. So therefore, one has to, well, but this is consistent with, with, with this general uh, uh, property that supersymmetry means always uh, one function unfixed, and this one function has to be fixed by the equations of motion or by young identities. Here's the unfixed function that was we were using alpha, but one can also take this uh, z function as an unfixed function. Then one finds that the young identity of the phi form is exactly the Laplacian equation for the, uh, the z function, and on the right hand side is this. Uh, uh, G batch, uh, G bar. So now we can classify the solution by picking up the different uh, polymorphic function. And uh, for the simplest case, would be that it's just a constant function. 
And in this case, this corresponds to the so-called flow type, RG flow type of uh, solution, where one assumes that this organic depends on the one radial internal uh, coordinate. So in this case, that uh, this, 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 this harmonic function has to be constant. Well, if it's constant, then I have to distinguish these two cases, whether this is zero or not zero. If it's zero, then this is a Z unit harmonic uh, function. And then one can identify the UV region with the poles of this uh, harmonic function, because this harmonic has to have some, some poles somewhere. You can identify the UV region in this uh, RG type interpretation as the poles, and the infrared region one can identify with the uh, zeros of this uh, function, uh, Z, because it has to be harmonic uh, and monotonic function. Well, this is always uh, singular. It can become uh, uh, regular only if you turn on this, uh, if you make the right hand side of this uh, harmonic equation non zero. And uh, in this case, uh, but in this case, the internal space is always uh, non scalar whereas here in the UV region, one finds that it always becomes a Calabi space. This alpha is related to the neuronization of the scalar. Yeah, exactly. It's because there were two complex coefficients, the alpha was the uh, base of this, yeah. So, uh, eta, the anger, eta is one. No, no, this is this is one, I think. This is one. This is one. But there are these two complex uh, here, A and B. These are these two. A and B, this is the normal as two, 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 one. But we have these two complex uh, functions here, A and B star. And A, B plus I times this alpha and B on the other. And here B is uh, uh, is a more vector. Of course, eta is always normal as one. This was his uh, simplest case that is uh, <coughs> constant, while well, in general it's not constant. When well, it's not constant, we have again this holomorphic function um, so on the compact internal space. So we have a holomorphic function, as again we have some, some poles and, and zeros. And then we can look to uh, expand the solution around the, the zeros. And then we find around the zeros, we find this B type of a vacuum. But therefore, the, the internal space around the zeros becomes a Kähler geometry. Or the special case would be Calabiao if the axial dilaton is constant at this point. And the, the, the prototypes of gravity solution will be these three and the, the seven brains. But in fact, these zeros one can identify this. with these seven brains, yeah, these singularities. Uh, there has to be some, some these seven brains uh, uh, in the internal geometry. On the other hand, the, the, uh, the poles of this uh, function f, well, this one can, can expand the solution around one finds exactly this, this A time uh, uh, vacuum. And uh, therefore, at this, uh, this point, all the amount of homotopies becomes trivial. And uh, well, the prototype of gravity solution. Or the prototype to work out the solution of this eta was the NS hybrid solutions. So let me end with a uh, summary. So, well, I, I was starting uh, with uh, well, this introduction that we have to fix the model, well, it's things three compatibility we have this continuous modular space, and we have to fix the, the modular that contact with the standard model particle physics. And we want to, to fix the moduli by still preserving some, some super symmetry because we assume that the moduli fixing have to be taken care already at very high energies. And uh, what I was mainly in the main part, I was uh, discussing two approaches to, uh, to this uh, flux compartification. One approach was via nature of gravity, and the other approach was exactly by solving the 10 dimensional equations. But the advantage of this approach was, well, I came to this approach for the Church Schwartz reduction because any. Uh, Flux is nothing but the Schwarz reduction. So that was the corresponds always to gauge your gravity. And the advantage is that it gives an explicit uh, potential in four dimension. And we can have the potential and also can find uh, non supersymmetric schema and, and, and so on. We can discuss the Sinner vacuum and, and so forth. And, uh, but what is unclear here, the disadvantage is what is unclear is that the 10 dimensional uh, in geometry, what is the lift to, to, to 10 dimension, we don't know. We don't know how to wrap the brains on the geometry. And uh, well, what I was giving some uh, the nice thing is here that can explicit uh, give uh, conditions when all moduli will be fixed. This is just the condition of the Killing vector. On the other hand, uh, the, the second approach was uh, by solving directly the ten-dimensional equation. But then we get, of course, the explicit uh, geometry defined by by non-zero uh, by torsion classes. Uh, but here it becomes, of course, I mean, this under we are sitting already in the vacuum. And then it becomes already unclear what is the potential. To the light the potential, one has to perturb the, one has to go a little bit around this, this, this vacuum. You see the light in the vacuum, we are sensible to the value of the potential. It's, it's the cost watching constant, but you cannot <coughs> determine the potential itself. 
But also uh, that presented an uh, explicit example for the uh, type 2 b case where the uh, internal space was in complex space. But here also we don't know exactly what is, uh, whether all moduli are fixed or not. And also another issue is that uh, can we have higher matter and we wrap rates on it, can we have higher matter on the uh, common intersection of these uh, rates. Okay, thank you.